Imagine for a moment that you're walking along the banks of a river and you come across a dull, opaque, and ugly stone. After looking at it and seeing that it looks like an ordinary stone, you throw it away. But did you know that it could be a precious stone? Well, if this has never happened to you, you can be sure that it has happened to someone you know. That's because not all precious gems are found polished and so obvious in nature. That's why these gems need a little closer inspection to be found. Just to give you an idea, rubies, for example, are rare and very expensive stones that can be found in many rivers around the world, including the rivers in the region where you live. And that goes for sapphires, diamonds, agates, and almost every type of precious mineral you might be lucky enough to find out there. But before we go any further, I'd like to ask you a question. If you found a sapphire or a ruby in a river, would you be able to recognize them? If the answer is no, then this video is for you. Because today, I'm going to reveal how to identify these two precious stones if you find one lying around. And as usual, here's another video with useful and relevant information that will change the way you look at things, as well as teaching you how to recognize a rare gemstone if you come across one. First, it's important to know that rubies and sapphires are the same type of mineral called corundum, which is composed of oxygen and aluminum and some impurities. This is the second hardest mineral in the world. It's only behind diamond on the Mohs scale, which means that corundum has a hardness of 9 moes, while diamond has a hardness of 10 moes. So in theory, rubies and sapphires are the same thing. The difference is that rubies are defined by their red color, while sapphires are defined by their other colors. And now that you know that rubies and sapphires are the same type of mineral, this means that if you find a ruby, you can certainly also find a sapphire in the same place. So almost everything you learn here applies to both rubies and sapphires. Another important thing to know is that rubies and sapphires are extremely expensive and highly valued on the gemstone market. But this only applies to high quality stones, just like any gem, including diamonds. To become valuable, a stone needs to be crystalline and have an intense color. The more crystalline and clear, the higher its market value. Therefore, not every ruby or sapphire found in nature is going to be a valuable stone. If it doesn't have a very good color or quality for cutting, it will only be called an industrial ruby, where the mineral is used as an abrasive material, thanks to ruby's ability to scratch anything except diamonds. But don't worry about that, because if you find an industrial ruby, there's a good chance you'll find a very high quality ruby but after all, what are the indicators to find rubies or sapphires? How can you know where they are before you go looking in any river? First of all, you need to learn to recognize the signs for rubies, and this information will apply to any type of terrain. So, in order to find any stone in nature, there are clues, which are the minerals we can find in nature that are associated with rubies and sapphires. When you identify these minerals, you'll realize that you're in a region that's more likely to have rubies or sapphires. A good sign for the presence of rubies and sapphires is usually regions with a lot of white quartz, which we talked about in the previous video. In addition, shale and mica schist can also be found. If you've never seen it, it's this shiny material that crumbles easily. The presence of mica is also a good indicator. Mica can be found in various colors. The more mica, the greater the chance of gemstones. It is also important that you learn to identify pegmatite, which is a rock related to granite, made of quartz and feldspar. It is rigid, full of visible granular inclusions and usually gray in color. Depending on your region, there may even be huge walls of this material. Other rocks we can see are the aluminous gneisses. These are gray rocks that also look a bit like granite, but with long stripes. These rocks contain a lot of aluminum, which is the main element in the formation of rubies or sapphires. Zolcite is a light green mineral, which is also commonly found in association with rubies. So look out for green stones with pink dots, as these can be a strong indication of the presence of rubies in the area. If there is also a lot of basalt, marble, and granite in the area, this could also be a good indication. And the more of these signs you have, the better it will be for you to identify the presence of this precious stone. So now you know all the information you need to know about whether or not a river near you has sapphires or rubies. But regardless of that, we're now going to show you how to identify a ruby or sapphire in practice directly in rivers. Once you've found a ruby or sapphire in a river, even if it's a bad color, that's a great sign. This is because the stones found in the river undergo natural selection, meaning that higher quality stones are stronger and more resistant, while lower quality stones are more brittle and fragile. So when they come into contact with other stones over the years, 
The more fragile stones are naturally eliminated, while the more resistant ones remain intact for longer. Here are some pieces found in Brazil to use as an example. At first glance, they look a lot like ordinary river stones, but they are sapphires. The colors still aren't the best, but large stones can have added value due to the rarity of their size. These grayish, greenish stones are another type of sapphire that also came from rivers. Now guess what those reddish stones are? That's right, they're rubies. And you can see that their color is a pinkish red, although it's not very intense, and we can see that. But even if these stones aren't of the highest quality yet, once they've been cut, they can be worth a lot, including these stones you're looking at now. These are some of the rubies shown earlier, already cut and ready to be sold. But how do you identify a stone like this to know if it's a ruby or a sapphire? In practice, the first thing that strikes you about stones like these is their weight. Rubies and sapphires have a high density and can weigh almost twice as much as an ordinary stone compared to quartz, jasper, or agate. This different weight means that these stones tend to accumulate with other heavier minerals in rivers, such as humanites and chromite, which are a mixture of iron and titanium and are very heavy. This is why the river tends to cause these heavier stones to accumulate in cavities in the rivers, taking only lighter stones with it. Garnet, for example, is another mineral that we can find, which can indicate the presence of rubies and sapphires. Garnet is also a heavy, precious stone with a reddish color, but the color of garnet is not to be confused with the color of ruby. While the red of rubies is more pink, the red of garnets is more brown. One test you can do to identify rubies in a practical way is to use an ultraviolet flashlight. In ultraviolet light, rubies will have an intense pink color that stands out. The other stones will be the same color as the ultraviolet light, but this test only serves to identify rubies. Sapphires do not react to ultraviolet light. Another common feature to look out for in rubies and sapphires is their DNA. That's right, a stone's DNA is a popular way of saying that the stone has a distinctive characteristic that only it has, as if it were a fingerprint. Sapphires and rubies tend to have a weave-like appearance, like a tic-tac-toe game with lines that cross on both sides. Take a look at these cut samples of golden sapphire. In them, we can clearly see these striations that look like a weave of fabric. And we can also see a bit of the famous historism effect. This characteristic won't always be so evident. So every heavy stone you come across, it's worth analyzing this characteristic a little more carefully. Perhaps in some cases, you'll need a magnifying glass to observe this characteristic in the stone. Even a ruby or sapphire with a more translucent quality will have this characteristic. Designs forming a spiral are also striking features in some stones that are worth looking at carefully. And last but not least, if the stone is broken, be wary. Rubies and sapphires are very resistant and hard, meaning they don't break easily. In addition, rubies and sapphires have no cleavage, and when they break, they are totally irregular. On the other hand, a garnet, a quartz, a jasper, or an agate, when broken, can present a smooth or shiny fracture, very similar to glass when it breaks. But unlike other gems, this doesn't happen with sapphires or rubies, which, when broken, become irregular, with almost no shine at all. If you spot a sapphire in a river, even if it's of poor quality, it means you're in the right place, and it's worth looking for more stones of better quality. But the main thing if you want to find a ruby or sapphire is to learn to spot the signs, and this tip applies to any gemstone. So, if you want, I recommend that you go back to the video, get a pen and paper, and write down the topics in this video. And for those of you who are still feeling a bit lost, I recommend having a sample of some gemstones in your hands, because when you have the minerals in your hands and feel the texture, it's much easier to identify another similar stone in nature, even if they are low-quality gems. But before we continue, if you learned anything new from this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and comment on what you thought of it. Now moving on, did you know that as well as rubies and sapphires, you can also find fortunes in the form of jade stones? Then watch the next video.